fellow young, for those who are yet to know you, would you like to introduce yourself first, please? Yeah, my name is Jan Verhaas. I'm one of the senior referees at World Snooker. Um, apart from that, I also assess referees all over the world, train them up to become better. And uh, I've worked for World Snooker, or WST, for nearly 30 years now. 30 years? Yeah. As one of the top uh, snooker referee. And you've been at uh, many, many of the major finals. Yeah. I wonder what's left that you want to achieve for the coming years? Um, well, I don't really think that I need to achieve anything else than what I've already achieved. But I still love my job and I still love refereeing and I still get butterflies when I go out there, especially if it's a big occasion with a lot of crowd. Um, so yeah, I just keep enjoying myself in the job. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's your point of view that you became uh, respected and loved by so many players? Um, I think that, that comes with the experience that you build up. I mean, when I started refereeing, I was probably as young as the, the top players were at that time, the same age, so we're from the same generation. So I grew up with all these players playing and refereeing. Um, and you, you just gain the respect. Obviously, you've got to do your job good, um, otherwise you don't get the respect from the players. But, uh, yeah, because you're such a familiar face on the circuit, uh, people start respecting you if you do your job well. I wonder if you could be good or close friends to any of the players as a referee, because uh, I wonder whether you want to keep some distance so that you can always make neutral decisions and avoid conflict of interest. Yeah, I think that comes with the respect. I mean, obviously, when you tour the world and every season you tour with the same players to every city in the world where you're going to, uh, you do become friends. You stay in the same hotels, you eat in the same restaurants, um, you see each other at the venue. So uh, that's part and parcel of, of uh, the friendship that you have with the players. But they also know, because they respect you so much, they also know that when you're out there as a referee, that a friendship goes and, and you're just there to make the decisions, good or bad, against that player that you know very well. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed you are the first non breton referee to do the finals in yeah. the World Championship. As a Dutchman, uh, do you travel every time from the Netherlands for the tournament or you actually spend quite a lot of time living in the UK now? No, I, I used to live in the UK. When oh. I first started and uh, we had all the qualifiers in uh, Blackpool and it was like two, two and a half months in Blackpool, then um, I met a girl there in Blackpool and I lived there for a couple of years. And then um, when that relationship uh, finished, then I went back to the Netherlands. And from then on, I just travel from the Netherlands to every event that I have to go to. Are there any full-time snooker player in your country? Because I haven't noticed any. No. 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 Um, I, th I think uh, basically what it is, is that the, um, the, the kids that want to play snooker in the Netherlands, they'll be told by their parents first study. And then snooker is your hobby, whereas, you know, in other countries and especially in China and in the UK, you know, that priority has changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, but in the Netherlands, uh, you, you do your school first and then if there's time for hobbies, then you uh, play snooker or whatever hobby you want to do. Um, so, yeah, that, that's obviously, uh, it means that um, we don't have professional snooker players. Um, we've got good snooker players, but to become uh, to the level of professionals, um, I think it takes more time and yeah. dedication. Yeah, and uh, you got the nickname James Bond from the China Open yeah. back 20 years ago. Yeah, a long time Any ago. Any interesting story you can share with us about um, your trips in China? It was just really funny because uh, the, the woman that did the introductions for the players at that event, um, she couldn't pronounce my name at all. So, uh, and uh, when we got introduced, um, we got introduced with um, two guys, they were armed guards from somewhere. And uh, she just looked at it and she just uh, introduced me as James Bond and that stuck forever then. Because I stayed a couple of days after that event in Beijing and I was walking on Tiananmen Square and there were tourists there and they were all saying, oh, there goes James Bond. And that's how it just stayed there forever. And with so many trips to China, what do you like or enjoy the most? Oh, I miss there? China so much. Um, I love to go to China. I just love the travel there and, um, you know, the culture. Um, every city that we've been to is, is like quite an eye opener for us Western people. Um, I just really miss it. I hope we go back very soon. 
Mm -hmm. And you also trained many Chinese referees while yeah. you were in that country. I wonder what's your general impression about them and what they need to improve the most to become a professional snooker referee? Um, Chinese people are very disciplined. Um, so when you tell them something, they put it in, the, in their head and they, the, the, they won't Obey. forget. Um, I've, from the moment that I've started training referees in China, I've seen the level of refereeing going up and up. So it's very good. You've got some really good referees in China. And hopefully when all this pandemic stuff is over, then we can mix them in again in the Western world and we can go back there. And, uh, you know, because to, to stay good in your job, you need, you need a lot of work. And, uh, you know, every time when there's repetition and it stays with you in your, in your head, and that's how you, how you stay good, really. So uh, hopefully we go back soon. Yeah. And quite often we hear that players are under pressure and then they have a lot of stress uh, in those crucial moments. I wonder, as a referee, you will feel stressful or pressure sometimes as well, especially when calling at those very important decisions. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know the occasion. You recognize how big the occasion is at times. But it's the same with players. When, when they are in pressure situation, they go back to their technique and they just say, OK, you know, stick to your technique and nothing can go wrong. It's the same really with referee and snooker. If you, if you stick to what you're taught and just stay in that concentration zone, then you know the rule book, you know all the rules in snooker, so you just have to make the decision depending on what rule it is. So discipline is, is a lot for referee and snooker. Yeah, and many people are interested to know uh, so for those major events, finals or semi-finals, how are the referees' names decided? Um, well, that's one of my jobs. Uh -huh. So I, I look at referees throughout a uh, tournament. And then, uh, especially in China, we, we go there. We don't really decide who's going to do the final before the tournament starts. We do that during the tournament. So when we see a referee really uh, progressing and doing really well, and then uh, I would like to give them a chance to either do a semi-final or maybe the final. So it could be a last call? Uh, yes, yes, it could be, yes. We always have, for instance, final weekend, we, we always stock with four or five referees anyway, and I can make that decision then, yeah. Uh, as close as possible to see who are Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I decide earlier. a lot earlier. Uh -huh. it, it just depends on how the tournament develops. And do you play snooker sometimes yourself as well? Not really. I used to when I was younger, when uh -huh. I first started, obviously, because that's how I fell in love with the sport. Um, but now, no. If I'm at home now, I see so many snooker tables when I'm away. <laughs> so when I'm at home, uh, I don't want to see a snooker table, really. But I want to, uh, from my research, it says you like cycling and tennis as well, and yeah. playing darts. Yeah. The cycling, um, that's, that's past now. I mean, I'm a bit too old now. My body is too old to cycle uh, long distances. But in the Netherlands, it would be perfect. Yeah, it's all I know. Flat. I know, but it's also, again, it's got to do with discipline, and I don't have ah. that anymore. So, um, yeah, tennis, I love playing tennis, and obviously, darts is uh, one of my favorite sports. Yeah. And for those who are interested to become a professional snooker referee, and if they ask you whether they can make a living to become a full-time or more than part-time referee, what, what, what will your answer um, be? We always say that um, snooker refereeing is a hobby. Mm. And unless you're really, really good and unless you live in a country or you work for an association that gives you that opportunity to uh, make it full-time, then by all means, you know. But don't step in uh, becoming a snooker referee thinking that you're going to make a living. It starts as a hobby with any, any sport that, that, you, uh, that you start. It's a hobby at first. And then just see how far you can progress. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome.